This is Twit. Here is a fact for you. Low-income students who score in the top 5% of all third graders in math are not, no more likely to become inventors than below average math students from affluent families. In other words, you might be smart, but if you don't have money, you might become what one new economic research paper calls a lost Einstein. Race, ethnicity, and geography play a role in the success or lack of success of high-performing students. And this, the paper's authors say, is stifling innovation. Joining us to talk about how this is affecting the tech industry is one of the paper's authors, Alex Bell, a PhD candidate in the Harvard Economics Department studying inequality and innovation. Thanks so much for coming on, Alex. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. So in the abstract of your paper, you and your colleagues say growing up in a neighborhood or a family with a high innovation rate in a specific technology class leads to a higher probability of patenting in exactly the same technology class. Tell us a little bit more about what that means. That's right. So one of the things that we're interested in studying here is just generally who becomes an inventor. And one of the striking things that we find is that kids who grew up around inventors are much more likely to become inventors themselves. It's suggestive to us that there may be some sort of exposure effect of, of uh, being exposed to an inventor on a child's likelihood of being becoming an inventor his or her, herself. And as you mentioned, we find that these exposure effects are technology specific. So it's not just the case that growing up around inventors makes you become an inventor yourself, but Growing up around inventors uh, in computer categories is also more likely more likely to make the kid become an inventor in a computer technology category. So, so what data did you use in your research? So, in order to study this question, we used a data set of about um, one million uh, patents that were granted by granted by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Patents are often thought of in economics as a measure of innovation and innovative activity. But one of the problems with patent data is you know very little about the people who are applying for the patents. So the patent office doesn't collect any statistics on um, race or gender or the family backgrounds of the inventors. Um, so in order to study those questions, we link the patent data to uh, some administrative data sets of tax records and school data to understand the types of people who are um, filing for patents in the United States. In your paper, you you point to the third grade as being kind of a, a market point where you start to see some some differences. Uh, explain that a little bit. Why is the third grade so um, so important to the study? That's right. So one of the questions in the paper is how much do differences in um, ability, as measured by some test scores, um, relate to the disparities that you mentioned? Uh, these disparities being the differences in patent rates from kids from di very different backgrounds. And one finding of the paper is that although test scores in early childhood are actually surprisingly predictive of which kids are going to go on to file a patent later in life, those test scores don't differ all that much for the kids from um, high and low income backgrounds early on in life. Yet the patenting rates for the kids from these very different backgrounds is, is quite stark. Um, we see this as evidence that there are differences in the kids' environments that emerge over their life. Uh, although we don't see differences in these uh, math test scores in early years, you see these differences grow over the lifetime. Um, so by eighth grade and by college, there are very different measures of, uh, of uh, uh, test scores for kids from low and high income backgrounds. And it's consistent with a story in which their environments are, are, are different and they're not accumulating the skills that they need to become inventors. Is there anything that we can tell before third grade? Because as you mentioned in your paper, a lot, a lot can happen between zero and third grade. Um, is there any, I know you didn't look at this, but is there any way to, to look at, uh, you know, to, to measure ability at age zero? <laughs> that's right. No, that's a very good that's a very good question. Um, this is something other papers have tried to do. Um, there's some very cool work by other economists, Roland Fryer and Steve Levitt. Um, apparently, there are ways to measure the cognitive ability of infants. They involve um, how they react to puzzles and things like that, and it's called the, the Bailey score of infant development. And all the literature that I've seen in that area seems to indicate that there are no detectable um, differences in ability, at least uh, by race by um, the age of nine months. Hmm. Now, obviously, when you do a study like this and you're looking at a large pool 
of of children in this case um growing up and everything there's a majority let's say that fall into you know the the uh the categories that you that you spell out but there will be outliners there will be people so there will be children who grew up without let's say those role models or who grew up in lower opportunity areas yet are able to kind of be successful and make that conversion as they get older. Was there any identifiable trademark of those children to know what, like what was different in their exposure and in their world uh, versus the rest? That's right. That's a good question. So you're asking what can we say about the sort of kids that make it despite yeah. all the odds. Um, one thing that I will say is that they tend to have very high test scores. Um, so inventors in general, essentially no one becomes an inventor unless they have a test score um, above two standard deviations above the mean, essentially, which is a pretty high test score. Um, so, so even the kids that do make it through from, from poor backgrounds tend to have very high test scores. And then second, we generally find that, um, you know, an important factor in who becomes an inventor, like I mentioned before, is exposure to inventors. So we do see higher innovation rates in neighborhoods that have more inventors themselves. And it's suggestive to me that, uh, mentors and role models and things like that may be having some effect here also. Yeah, that map that uh, was published in the New York Times is amazing to look at. That's what caught my eye and made me want to reach out to you. Um, so the, the paper talks about this big gap between rich and poor. What about middle class families? Where, where do they fall in this? Mm, that's a good question. Um, so I've been actually very surprised uh, to what extent middle class families seem to do not that much better than poor families. And one finding of the paper that's really startled me is how much innovation has actually been sort of concentrated among um, the very high income families. And we're really talking about families in the top 20% or so of the income distribution. Um, the top 20%, I'm talking about families that make over about $100,000 of, of family income per year. Um, so it's somewhat of a puzzle still why innovation is so remarkably skewed toward the very rich families. But I think that it may have something to do with um, the social networks and access to institutions that come with um, uh, the sort of access to pr privilege. Mm -hmm. And then uh, kind of touching on, on what you talked about a few minutes ago, as far as role models are concerned, if that ends up being, you know, a big key part of this, like what's happening to, to improve uh, children's exposure and, and particularly in, in areas that would be affected here uh, to the right kinds of role models, the, the right, the right uh, connections that they can make so that they're exposed to the, the, those people that would inspire them, motivate them to move forward? So in terms of what can be done, I think that uh, it's important to think about targeting interventions at children from underrepresented groups who excel in math and science, but to do so at younger ages in particular. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've talked about how uh, this is really a pipeline problem um, and it's important to start early, but not just starting early, but also tailoring programs to participants' backgrounds. And what, what I mean by that is um, we see, for instance, uh, women are much more influenced by the patent activities of women around them than of men around them. And um, I think that there's this, there's this phrase tossed around, you know, you can't be what you can't see. Uh, I think it's important for people to have role models, but not just role models. They need role models that are like them. Mm. Um, so I think that's important to, to keep in mind going forward also. So, so the, the papers about lost Einsteins that we mentioned before, um, these people that, that, that might have been an Einstein or a Steve Jobs or, you know, any, um, a Grace Hopper, any, any of these people that, that aren't, um, is there any way to know uh, of knowing who they are? I mean, do we, do we know, is there any way of, of tracing them or are they just invisible? No, I think it's really difficult to point to any one kid and say that kid there was a lost Einstein. Um, we know that there are, you know, a lot of kids with very high math test scores, test scores that seem like they should be qualified to, to become an inventor later in life, but they don't. And we see that they're primarily coming from uh, disadvantaged backgrounds uh, in terms of parental income, and they seem to be coming from minor minority races. And that's as far as we can say right now. 
Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Um, there, Alex is part of a team of, of writers, uh, researchers, scientists um, who are working on this, and they're also working in a, uh, a project called the Equal Equality of Opportunity Project. So you can check that out at equality-of-opportunity-org. Um, what is the best place to follow you and this work that you're doing, Alex? Yeah, I would definitely check out the Equality of Opportunity website, and it's got some other great information about studies on... Uh, economic mobility in particular. Thanks so much uh, for talking to us, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Great. Thanks very much. All right. Keep up the great work.